we see from these pictures, most civilizations started in areas where agriculture is feasible. You see the painting on the walls of the caves of the uh, prehistoric area, uh, era, and we see this painting depicts the activity of agriculture during that time. And the human civilization started in area with, uh, with fertile soils, where ag agriculture activities are feasible, such as the Mesopotamia in the Tigris Euphrates, Nile Valley in Egypt, Indus Valley in India and in Pakistan, Huanghu and the Yangtze Kiang River in China. These are some of the examples. So most of this area where civilization starts shows that the area also uh, started with agriculture activities. This is very interesting. What I'm showing you is the, the world population clock. So this shows the population in real time. So the world population now is more than 7 billion. And the, the population keep on increasing and it is increasing at a very fast rate at the rate of 2.4 per second. Can you imagine it? The world population increased at the rate of 2.4 person per second. And if you calculate in one year, there will be at least 74 million people will be added to the world. And all these people requires food. And this is a graph that shows the progress, uh, progressive increase of the global population, which is now stand at 7 billion. And in 2050, it will reach close to 10 billion which means there is a need of more supply of food from agriculture. And if you look at the relationship between population and the arable land, arable land here means the land for production of food, on the world arable land per person, we'll see that in 1960, the world arable land per person is 0.42 hectare per person. The size of the land, the size of arable land cannot increase. It exists as it is, but the population keep on increasing. Because the population increase from year to year, and we see that the size of per capita arable land decreases with time. And you see that from 0.42, it is 0.35, it is 0 0.30, 0 0.26, and 0.23, and now I think it's less than 0.2. What it means that with time, because of the growth in the population, each person in this world has less land available for production of food. So that means we have to do a lot of things in agriculture. We have to keep on increasing our food production in a limited land to support the growing population. So this is a very interesting figure, which shows that if you look at the blue line, it shows that the production of food is increasing tremendously from 1960 to uh, year 2000 onwards. But if you look at the area harvested, that means the area uh, planted, which is the black line, there is no increase. It's a flat line. Means that there is no increase, remarkable increase in the area of agriculture land being planted for the production of food. However, there is a big increase in the production. How does this happen? What is the secret of this? So the answer is, if you look at the red line, the right line shows the yield or the productivity. Uh, year by year, the red line increasing, which means that 
human being has been successfully uh, increasing the productivity of the land. I give you an example. At one time, the yield of rice in most countries is about two tons per hectare. But now, it is possible to increase or to have yield of rice at even 10 tons per hectare. So why or how this happened? This is because human being is capable to improve through science and technology. So this is the global grain production. We've, uh, there is an increase in global grain production if you look at the blue line. However, the grain share per capita per person is, increase, is decreasing because there are more people uh, to consume those, although there is an increase in the total production. Um, as I mentioned to you, agriculture is also for wealth creation, it's creating wealth. So if you see, this is the situation in Malaysia. Um, for the Malaysian economy, the agriculture is contributing to the GDP. And um, Malaysia, palm oil export, uh, this is a newspaper cutting, to exceed uh, in 2011 a record high of 80.41 billion in three to five years. So agriculture is contributing to the GDP of a nation. And um, enhancing rural economy, the Felda Land Development Authority, which is one of the very successful organization in, in the world, uh, has improved the quality of life and the economy of the rural people in Malaysia. When you look at these pictures, you see that originally uh, there were jungles and they have very uh, poor living condition. But now, as you see below, the houses have uh, improved tremendously and the income of the people have also increased tremendously due to um, agriculture activities. And uh, biodiesel, uh, the, this is an example of the palm oil. When palm oil is produced, the palm oil is being sent to the factory or refinery to produce oil. And this oil is either being used as food or it can be converted to biodiesel and later on it can be used to, uh, to run engine, to run cars, automobile. And this is renewable fuel. Aesthetic. Um, beside providing food, beside good for the rural economy, beside for biofuel, agriculture also uh, has aesthetic values and it provides nice flowers for landscape. This is orchid, very nice orchid plant. And um, pharmaceutical, this is an example of a pharmaceutical product. This comes from a plant called Huricoma longifolia, or Tonka Ali, which is very famous uh, now. This is also a product uh, of pharmaceutical from, uh, from plants. So let us now look at the origin and transformation of agriculture. Can you imagine before the existence of ag agriculture, where does people obtain their food from? Now we can go to the supermarket and buy our food. It's always there. But in the olden days, in the prehistoric days, when there was no agriculture, human beings were foragers, or they are food gatherers and hunters. They have to go out in the wild and collect plants, collect animals for their food. And food were obtained by foraging, uh, wild plants, and also animals for survival. That means every day, people has to go and look for their food. And everybody has to look for their food. So uh, they, they don't have 
any time or any other, uh, they don't have time to do other things because uh, food is essential for everybody's survival.